Hello YouTube, today we'll be learning how to make our first modded Park Attack coaster train. First, I'm going to show you how you can figure out the size your train needs to be by looking at the in-game Park Attack models for reference. And then we're going to make a train of our own from the snowmobile. So, to get started, you're going to want to go to the GitHub for the uh, thing called the Asset Studio. And this is a tool to extract and view models from a game like Park Attack, which was built in Unity. So I'll have a link to this and then you just go to releases, download it. And when you unzip it, it'll have a, an EXE. So you just run that. And then you're going to need a, a link to your data. So this is where mine is. It's wherever you just installed your Parkitect game. So you to file, load file. So mine's in program file, Steam, and then down to Parkitect data. Go to resource.assets, and it'll take a second to load that in. Okay, so you've got a few ways of exploring it. Uh, I like going to asset list and then filtering by mesh. And then that should have all of your, the meshes and you can just look at them and you can right click and you can export them. So they sometimes have interesting names like the monorail coaster is called Raptor. And you might notice this one doesn't have any wheels. Um, sometimes they're broken up in different pieces. A good example that we can look at today is the hyper coaster. So, a nice model. I'll just export selected assets, put that in my downloads folder. All right, and it's exported. So if we go over in, back into uh, Blender and hide those, we can import our model, which is usually in the object format. So it's in our downloads, and then it creates a little mesh folder. Open that. And there you go. And some things you can notice is the wheels are level with the Z zero point. And if we go back to the Parkitect GitHub Wiki, we can see that it lines up with what they tell you to do. So this is a great reference. So it says the pivot of your car should be centered on the front wheels and it should be zeroed on the bottom of the top wheels and that's make sure it'll run along the top of the coaster track. So what we want to do now is if we were going to reference this, we could make our own model, but maybe we just want to keep the wheels. So there's this button which makes things transparent that kind of just helps select stuff. So you come in here, select the wheels, like that, control L to finish off your selection, and then P selection, and then that'll just split them up. So then you could build your own model based off of this, and it would line up perfectly with the hypercoaster track. Uh, just one little fun fact, you might notice this isn't up here at the zero point like the wiki said. That's because these work where there's only a back bogey, there's not a front bogey, so they're always offset backwards. Alright, so that's how you can get an uh, initial reference model in. Uh, let's do something nice and simple for the first train model. So we'll just make a, sort of a fantasy one with snowmobile it's just going to drive along a track so the first thing we want to do is get our pivot correct so i'm going to jump in here and select all and we're going to move this back so we want our front wheel right on the zero zero point okay the next thing i'm going to do is duplicate this so we just copy paste. All right. And we're going to apply the mirror. 
And what that lets us do is two things. So first I'm gonna grab this, P separate, and we'll call this glass. So that'll let us apply a custom material. And the next thing we're gonna do, which I've already done, is these wheels. So let's delete those and just do it again. So you just wanna grab your wheels and make those separate. And what that does is allow them to also rotate as it turns around the track. So I'm gonna name these wheels front and we can go back to the wiki. And that's what it says is another step is you wanna, if you're having pivoting wheels, you name them wheels front, wheels back. Uh, as it points out, they're not always visible, like on the wooden coaster, for example, is not gonna do inversions, so you'll never see them. So you can just leave them as a single part, but the snowmobile will have these turn. So then I've got my peep also in a good position. So I'm gonna grab all these with control. Okay, so I like to just move them, make sure everything's selected. File, export, FBX, applying our transform, selected objects only, export it right into my Unity folder. Okay. All right, and we can just drag that into our Unity project. So it's just a normal Unity mod. And I've got my previous fantasy trains here. Uh, can apply our transparent glass material. That looks nice. And then we'll grab our snowmobile and make it a new mod object down here. So it'll be a train, of course. Uh, price doesn't matter, custom colors. Just do these real quick. We'll go orange, red, yellow, blue. All right. And if you had a light material, which is just any of these that say uh, illumination, then that would turn on at night, which is kind of fun. So snowmobile, you can see it's complaining there's no back access marker. So we'll just add an empty in that back axis. And let's look at the other side. All right, a little less messy. So we'll just move that to the back axis and that's like another pivot point. And we've got our seat. Uh, you could always add more seats if you want. Have a guy on the back. And another fun thing you can do with the seats is you give them a little rotation. There, now it looks like he's having fun really leaning into it. Okay, so other things in our train settings, we need to choose the ride. So we'll do mono coaster. Default train length, set that at one. Minimum, also one. Max, let's say three. And we have our lead car that gets added automatically. So it's referencing our snowmobile model. Seat waypoint. This is a little hard to see, but there's this red dot there. If I move that model, you can see that. So that's where he's gonna walk to before he loads. So in this case, we're just gonna set it to zero. So he's gonna walk straight up to the seat. Uh, but you can just move that around so he doesn't run into railings or anything on your coaster. The next thing is we'll change the offsets. So this just controls where the other cars in the station on the tracks see this bounding box. So we'll put this here so that if there's like two cars in the station, they won't be clipping inside each other. And on the back, now typically you actually leave this zero and if you had another train behind it, then it's gonna pivot around this zero point. And maybe the other train would have like a rectangle bar to uh, connect it. And an example of that is the jet ski raptor here. So you can see it has this bar bringing it in so that it's all linked up. So we'll leave that at zero. Uh, it's still sort of the Christmas season. So let's give the snowmobile something to pull around. Can use the uh, crate. And we can just make that the normal car. And 
and we'll give that a back axis as well. All right. And we're going to want to zero out the location of that crate. There you go. Okay. So the crate, since it doesn't have that bar or anything, in this case, we can actually offset its front a little bit. And then we'll also offset the back. And so if there's more crates, they should just follow behind it. Uh, it doesn't need a seat, but you could add one. And then you can also add a custom rear car if you're making something like that dragon coaster in the game, which has a head, a bunch of middle sections, and then a tail. So there'll only ever be one lead car and one rear car. And then you can have as many normal cars in the middle as that slider goes up. Okay, that's looking good. And now we just have to export it. So. Give this a new version number, export. Okay, loaded into our map. I've already got a little monorail coaster set up. And now we have a new snowmobile car. And you can choose how many cars there are, there are per train. And number of trains, see how it lines up there. All right. And swap around those colors, that looks better. All right, let's take this for a test drive. And you can see how those pivot, and this is a pretty extreme pivot, so it's actually coming out of its housing, but really shows how that can add a little bit of uh, energy and interest. And then also if this was doing like a, a barrel roll or anything, that would also show up. All right, and there you have it, your first custom train in Parkitect. Nice job, see you next time. And one bonus tip is restraints is another thing you can add. So let's say on the snowmobile, we want the glass to uh, pivot and add that as a restraint, name it glass. And you can see it, it pivots. And so I've got my pivot point set to local. So this is the pivot point of the glass. So what you'd want to do in Blender is actually move the pivot point to where you want the restraint to move. And then the restraint starts in the open position in, in your model. And then you'll have the angle change it to the closed position. So in the ride, it would be like this in the station and then it would pivot out like that in the uh, game as it closes, as it leaves the station. One other thing you can tweak in here is any of the cars individually can be spinning or swinging as you please. And there is some information on how to do that. And it's really easy. You just add a spin axis and then you nest everything below it inside Unity. Or you can add a swing axis. So it's another fun way to make some interesting custom cars.